From great oceans, giant mountains will form. This is the prediction of the third phase of the Wilson cycle, where we see the closure of vast oceans like the Iapetus Ocean and the formation of continent-continent collision mountains. The first phase is the rifting phase. This is uh, the, the, the breaking up of a continent and the rifting or creating of rifted margins. So now we, are, we have a fine grain, probably deep marine, uh, carbon rich um, sediment, sediment yeah. that has been overridden by this huge block here now that is uh, several hundred meters in, in length and maybe 100 meters thick or something like that. And this has overridden this... Uh, and this is mantle? This is... this is original mantle rock. Wow. Second stage is the creation of oceans in between these two continents that drifted apart and the spreading and opening of the ocean. Ah, yeah, look. Yeah, it's a really big, big, nice one, huh? This is a really good one. Yeah, it's a good, big, nice... <laughs> this basically tells us that we're in oceanic crust here. It, exactly. This is, the, this is the volcanic sequence of this ophiolite complex. So that the uppermost part of the ocean part, crust. Uppermost part of the ocean crust. The next thing up here now will be sedimentary cover on it. Third stage is the initial closure of this ocean. And that starts with subduction inside the ocean and creating island arcs and back off basins and all of these things. And when the main ocean has uh, been subducted, then we will uh, enter into the continental collision stage, which would produce big mountain belts. It is this phase of ocean closure and subduction that we are going to look at now. But if the ocean is being destroyed, how and where can we find evidence for this process in the rocks that are preserved in the Wilson cycle. We preserve the uh, oceanic part of a plate during the process of collision because some parts of this plate, they get accreted to the overriding plate and they just stay there, kind of stuck into the mountain. In order to explore how these remnants of ocean crust can be preserved during subduction, we're moving to a part of the field where we can look at some of these giant structures and Torgi is going to explain in a bit more detail just exactly how they're preserved. Okay, so now what we're going to do now, we're going to walk from the continent into the ophiolite and look at, look at the, how the ophiolite has been pushed onto this microcontinent, the Jotun microcontinent. So when, when that happened, the, the, the ophiolite came onto the continent, my right hand is now the continent, and, and started to load that uh, continental margin. And there was an elastic response there, so you got uplift uh, in, on, uh, on the continental side and a, a lot of erosion in that uplifted area. And that uplifted area here removed a lot of sediments that had been deposited here before and, and, and put, it, put it into this uh, the positional basin that, that was created by the ophiolite when it loaded it. So as the ophiolite came onto the continent, we, it overrode this uh, sediment that had been deposited in the fallen basin. At the same time, it also produced sediment into this basin, so it overrode itself, so to speak. So, and therefore it, it created this uh, mixed unit and it's mixed unit, continental source and, and oceanic source, and we call that a melange here, and we call it the Sunfjord melange because we are in Sunfjord. And it records the progressive arrival of the ophiolite onto the continent. And this is the only place in the Scandinavian caledonites where, where we can see this uh, so well developed. We also know the age of that because some of the sediments that was deposited on this continental margin were Silurian in age. They have fossils in them. They have shallow marine fossils, trilobite brachiopods most importantly, and, and, and corals. And it's brachiopods and corals are, are, are preserved here in, on, on the other side of the fjord here. So, and they are well enough preserved so we know exactly the age. They are middle Silurian in age, about 430 million years. So the Ophiolite is Ordovician, latest Ordovician, 443 million years, pushed onto the continent, which had already a sedimentary cover, 
uh, of uh, 430 million year age and then the deformation and the closure of this remnant part of the ocean was taking place just after 430. So we can time it very accurately. And, and thereafter, the ophiolite becomes abducted. Thereafter, the Laurentian margin finally arrived and, and collided on top of this again. So eventually we built up this stack of naps. Part, part of the naps were from the uh, Baltica margin, part of the naps were from the ocean, and part of the naps were from the Laurentian side. And eventually we got a really big, big um, thick continental crust where the lowest part uh, went into the acrogoid fascist metamorphic condition and even ultra high metamorphic condition. So um, this, part, this part of the Caledonites is very important to, under, uh, to record all of that history. This, now we come to the end of the Wilson cycle and we are closing the ocean. We finally get to the continental collision. So it's the occasional accretion of bits of ocean crust like a stack of cards during collision that allows us to provide evidence for the ocean closing phase of the Wilson cycle. Now we're standing right in the middle between the oceanic lithosphere crust and continental lithosphere crust. And the big cliff in front of us, two, three, four hundred meters high, is the ophiolite. So that's all the ophiolite that's stuff we were walking on this morning, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And we have yeah. seen quite a lot of the ophiolite already now. And then we have a very marked valley going up there. And from there to where we are standing now, we are in a mixed unit that was partly formed from the ophiolite when it was pushed up onto the continent, which is over in that side. So we have continent there, mixed unit with continental source, oceanic source between, and then, then the ophiolite yeah. on top. So we have clear evidence that this uh, Sulen stuff, your ophiolite complex, was pushed onto this Jotun type continental basement uh, with the sedimentary rocks in between. Because that's quite rare, isn't it? It's, fair, it's hard to actually find those structures where you can d demonstrate that you've got it's, oceanic crust on top of yeah, continental crust. Yeah, and it's hard crust. to find it in such a condensed way because one of the reasons why it's so easy to see it here is that that fault you see there now has been reactivated re as a normal fault to thin the sequence a bit. So originally this mixed unit between the ophiolite and the continent was considerably thicker. Right. Now we can just march across it in a few minutes. It may have been, it may have been a kilometer thick when it was originally formed. And now in a short walk we can sort of walk from the, co the continent to the ocean or yes. the ocean to the continent exactly. and, you and can decide between which, them. <laughs> you can decide which way you want to go and you can go both ways if you like and, and you can do it in a few minutes. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so. By discovering and mapping these rare structures which show ocean crust on top of continental crust, Torgier and other researchers are able to find vital keys to help understand the Caledonian Wilson cycle. But these things are big structures, they're hard to see without, you know, yeah. there must have been lots and lots of work to go into finding yeah, these things this, out. This is a product of, of tens of years now of work uh, and many, many people have been involved. You already met uh, Einar who did his master thesis on this mixed unit here and, and there's been a lot of other people involved here. And, um, and without all that detailed work, structure, geology, uh, geochemistry, detail mapping, everything uh, has been uh, sorted out more or less and, and it has taken a long time and now it's really well documented, yeah. published in several. It must be really quite rewarding yeah. as well when you can start to put, the, you know, put the, all the little pieces of the puzzle yeah, actually you know, back this, together. <laughs> when, we f when we first realised this, uh, quite often moments and ideas and, and understanding come when you sit and you chat huh? yeah. and you have done this and you have done that and maybe you have a beer to, as well and yeah. this happened, I know exactly when this happened, it ha happened in a place uh, where we are going to tomorrow and we sat around the table uh, for dinner and we really went through all the, all the details of how we have worked this thing out and then we said okay what are we going to call this mixed unit we decided to call it the Sunfjord Melange because it's the type locality is here in Sunfjord 
And the melange is simply a descriptive term for this mixed unit, continental rocks, oceanic rocks, mixed together by tectonic process, uh, sedimentary and tectonic processes during, during abduction of the ophiol. That it's must have been a nice moment when you sorted a, that out. It was a nice <laughs> moment and, and uh, we quickly, quickly understood that we had a paper ready to be written. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> so if we can preserve rocks during the ocean closure part of the cycle, what do those different rock types tell us about what's happening deep in Earth's history? One of the particular types of rock that we're interested in are island arc volcanic rocks that are made when you have ocean crust subducted under ocean crust. Subduction inside the ocean always starts um, uh, in, in, the, in the oceanic part. When uh, the plate subducts into the mantle, it's actually hydrated and it releases some fluids up into the mantle wedge above the slab and that uh, creates melt. And this melt goes up into the surface and it creates volcanoes and it creates an island arc. Uh, which is what, it's really great because it is something that is often preserved and we can see it and we have evidence for subduction because of that. Using computer models back at SEED, we're able to look at how these arc volcanics develop during the onset of subduction. Can you explain to me, one of the key bits of evidence we were looking at with the subduction was these um, arc volcanic systems. Oh yes. So this is a model where we have oceanic subduction. There's no continental collision. It's an oceanic plate that is going down. Right. And uh, I'll play it, and at some point you will see appearing some new contours, which is where the melt is formed. So it's ah. where you form new crust. Right. So as the slab is subducting into the mantle, at some point you start to see here that right. there is this new contour here, which is where melt is formed. And if I just play it a little bit further here, now we can actually distinguish between the arc and the back arc. So above the slab, you have fluids that are released from the slab. That they lowers melt, the melting temperature. So they you get melt melting. the mantle, and then up here you will have an island arc. Yeah. Whereas here in the back arc, you you have not really much fluid from the slab, but you still mantle have upwelling. mantle that is upwelling yeah. and is melting just because it's get is getting to very very low. Uh, depth and so it's melting there and it can form new oceanic crust. Mm. And the key thing is these have a certain type of geochemistry so when we find them in the field exactly we can you can them. you can exactly say this is from subduction this is a back arc because of the chemistry of it. Cool. Our journey now takes us north through the beautiful islands and fields of western Norway to hunt out examples of these arc volcanic rocks and in doing so we might need to get on a boat. In this westernmost part of Norway, there really are hundreds and hundreds of little islands dotted around them. Um, you know, really the only way to get to see the geology on them is by boat. So we're gonna hop on a couple of little boats and uh, um, go out and, and, and look for some evidence of, um, of some of these Devonian basins and also evidence for some of the subduction and the island arc, this old subduction evidence of the Iapetus closing. Okay, so here is uh, Kalvog, where we are, that little yellow, uh, red arrow. Oh, yeah. And then uh, we, we have a very nice uh, little boat trip. Have to be careful with these scaries here, you know, the, the rocks that are just submerged. There's lots of them, isn't there? There's, There's lots the and place. lots of places, and these uh, iron bars are showing some of them. Yeah. Then we go across um, to this island, it's called Ruta on this map, and in between this strait here. Oh, yeah. And here we have, on the island here is the Devonian Basin, uh, the conglomerates of the Devonian Basin, and right by the key here, there's a little key, this is the, this is the Bremanger Granodiorite, Diorite, the island arc uh, intrusive rock. So we, make, we have a contact between the um, uh, conglomerates, the primary depositional contact that just uh, goes along. And that's what we're going to go and have a look at. That's yeah. what we oh, will fantastic. have a look at now. 
There's uh, lots and lots of actual islands as well. Have you visited most of these? Yeah, we have been all over here uh, oh, right. uh, <laughs> at one time or another. We used to ha use um, boats a lot in this Yeah, area, yeah. I, I guess it's probably so, the only way to get around on exactly. some of these places. Yeah, there are some bridges in it for the big ones and, and to get here into Kalvog, but uh, all these small ones are inaccessible and there is no road for example to go further yeah, uh, yeah. out and, and look at this so a uh, boat geology here is uh, really uh, boat geology boat geology <laughs> boat very, geology i like yeah, that yeah. So, so let's go and do some uh, boat geology uh, let's shall we? go and do that <laughs> and uh, see if anybody falls in the sea yeah <laughs> well, it's pretty okay. We are. Uh, we just came with a boat from uh, Kalvog to an old place uh, called Gamle Smørhavn. Gamle means old Smørhavn, and it's it's a place where the merchant trade was going in the old days. You can see here the old uh, buildings uh, that where the where the trade of fish and stuff were going on. It's sheltered, nicely sheltered behind this island here. And uh, it happens to be a Devonian uh, conglomerate, that island here. Right. <laughs> and, and just next to us here, where we are standing on, on this uh, key now, we have a granodiorite that came up into an island arc during the closure of the Apatus Ocean. And uh, it's a granodiorite that is a very big uh, body here, many t few tons of kilometers in, in length and uh, about... Uh, five, six kilometer thick. And it is a late Ordovician in age, 445, 46 or something like that. And um, it happens to have been exhumed to the surface in the Devonian. So that the Devonian conglomerates that we have here now, uh, it's the Devonian conglomerate of the Hornelden Basin again. Yeah. And here is the contact between the sediments and uh, granodiorite. So we are standing on the Devonian surface. So that's that an was unconf unconformable surface. That's an yeah. unconformable surface, and you can see that uh, a lot of blocks of this granodiorite makes up the basal section oh. in the in the Devonian, and uh, and we can see that there's also um, weathering here, and um, there are wind-blown sand that has percolated into the fractures that you always have on the surface of the earth, always some open fracture somewhere and wind has swept uh, uh, sand so that the sand has fallen into these uh, fractures. So it's, um, it's a perfectly preserved Devonian unconformity and it's quite uh, thought when you are looking back towards the east now you have, to, you have to realize that there is 25 kilometers of Devonian stratigraphy on top of us. And the basin, in present preservation of the basin, is 60 kilometers over to the youngest part of wow. this basin. So it's, um, it, it is a quite a, a nice um, uh, story in, in these rocks here. Now we are standing right near the contact to the, to the, to the, to the granite itself, and you can see that that all these angular class that we see here are, gra uh, are uh, granitic, granitic material, like this beautiful, this beautiful granodiorite, uh, felsic, uh, very light-colored granodiorite, has a lot of 
plagio case in it. Here we have uh, sizable blocks of, uh, gran of, the, of the granodai right here. They are quite angular and, and you see these sharp edges here. That shows that they have hardly been transported at all. They have no rounding. So it's what we more like we call a breccia, conglomeratic breccia. It's almost just one type of uh, fragments here, but you can see occasionally there are some foliated things in here. And you also find some, some darker material that uh, are probably uh, metasedimentary rocks from the, from the arc sequence. And, and in between you find this sand. You see this green, greenish sand here, fine grain. Uh, sand that has infiltrated into the into the basal breccia. Most likely, this this sand you see more of it here uh, is um, windblown. Okay. So it, this was on the surface of the earth. There was, was winds blowing sand around just like they do today. And when there were open fractures in between these fragments, like open space, sand would percolate or fall into this. So we see a lot of this uh, sand. We can sometimes it's red and sometimes it's uh, a little green in, in color. You see more. Of it. You see so more these, of it. Um, all of these granites, you say they they formed in an island arc setting. Yeah, these are typical calcalkaline intrusions. That is uh, typical of uh, subduction-related magmatism. Right. And then, and they are uh, they formed in an island arc. <coughs> there are also. Other igneous rocks in this island arc, like uh, like a gabroic uh, gabroic uh, intrusion, they have more or less the same age. They are they are kind of late Ordovician, late Ordovician in age. Yeah. So they mark they mark uh, subduction in the Apatus Ocean, and it's a very late stage in the closure of the Apatus Ocean here. So we are coming we're coming right towards the end of the where you have an ocean left in the in the um, in the uh, Wilson cycle in, in Caledonian Wilson cycle. Ah, oh, fantastic! Mm. So, so, we've had so to, we've had to take a boat journey we, we to an island to go and see an ancient subduction island. Arc. island arc. Yeah, yeah. So that's a <laughs> bit of a, a bit of a, uh, an extra point. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so we moved just a few meters from uh, where we previously so looked at that conglomeratic breccia, and we can still see it just over there, over five the, meters yeah, away from us there. That's a nice class, with there. Lots of uh, nice big breccia, and we can see they are on top of where we are standing, or above us. And now we, are, we come down here, we see that the granite becomes intact. Uh, no more clasts. It's like granite, granite, granite all the way. So we have just crossed into the granite itself, into below the surface where the, the conglomeratic breccias were originally uh, deposited. So now we are standing very close to the Devonian surface. So this is like the Devonian paleo surface. It is the Devonian paleo surface. You could have walked around on this because it is subarian. The conglomerates that are sitting on top of it is a fluvial fluvial type of material. So yeah, it was, rivers and It was stuff. rivers and rivers and... Uh, and how old is this surface? This is about uh, 390 million years. Wow. <laughs> it's, uh, it's in the, in the, in the mid lower part of the middle of the Romania. Yeah. So it's this destruction of the ocean that brings the continents together, creates an island arc volcanic system that we can see on land today. And eventually it leads to the continent and continent collision stage of the Wilson cycle. And that's what we're going to go to now to find out about how deep rocks can be buried and made and also how you stack nap after nap after nap of geology one on top of another in a big mountain building event. <laughs> 